friend, thanks for joining me today. We've got to talk about something. And if you're in the content creator space, whether you are a YouTuber, <laughs> I always like to say Viner, even though Vine isn't around anymore. Vine was the launch pad for Reels, TikTok, all of these other short YouTube shorts, short content forms really got their footing off of Vine. Here's my point. If you make content, filmmaker, storyteller, videographer, you're a screenwriter, an actor, director, producer, content creator. Dan Lin going into leadership position at Netflix is a game changer for the independent. Why? Because Dan Lin is known for being calm, even keeled, well-liked, just a great guy to be around in the industry. And he has a long history of producing mid-range films that did well, that produced. And the thing is, we were talking in one of our previous videos about, it was in my video when I was interviewing, I hope you saw this, legendary distributor, Marcus Bofi. We talked about how it's okay, permission granted for the content creator, the filmmaker, to have their product make an income because you have to recoup the money. Dan Lin is responsible with the budget and his projects come in on time and come in on budget. So what does that mean for Netflix? He actually said, and I'm quoting from the Hollywood Reporter article, link below in the descriptions, Dan Lin was quoted in the article as saying, his assessment of Netflix films are not great and the financials don't add up. Boy, don't we know that, Dan. So here's the thing, Dan Lin going in, with his reputation for bringing projects in on budget means that as we've talked in other videos about the $200 million, thank you for saying it at the Oscars. I like a good, huge budget action film too, but content that is streaming, we are consuming it daily like this. We could eat a $200 million film daily. Whereas we used to, when we went to the theater, especially for summer blockbuster series in the summer, you'd go maybe once a week, maybe every two weeks. There were programs where kids could go and do a summer movie pass and the movie pass would let you go daily, but they were rerunning films, not brand new blockbusters. Think about summer's past pre-lockdown. There was the Jaws started it all, then the Star Wars, and then even recently, the Mission Impossible movies were coming out over the summer. I bet you could name, why don't you name it in the comments for me? What is the big summer blockbuster you remember where it was gobsmacking? When I saw Jurassic Park in the theater, seeing the T-Rex come in after it built up with the chaos theory in the water, because life uh, finds a way. That summer blockbuster, that $200 million film, we were waiting in anticipation for it, and then it launched. It stayed in the theater for weeks at a time. Okay, $200 million budget works. Now in the era of Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu, Paramount Plus, Show, you name it, just name it. <sighs> We need great content the audience is gonna enjoy. We need it to be empowering and engaging, memorable, and not $200 million. Do you think, let me know in the comments, with Dan Lim, excuse me, Dan Lin helming Netflix, will we begin to see a strong body of work what we're going to talk about next is tent pole strategy, a strong body of work that you really like, that's memorable, that you don't have to scroll, 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 scroll to be able to find something that you settle on watching that you don't really want to watch, but there's nothing else to watch. I feel like subscriptions have come to be the cable of internet. If you ever had cable and 200 channels and you feel like I have nothing to watch. Dan Lin coming in to head up Netflix, I think is going to be 
very good for the audience, that subscriber, I think you're going to be very happy. And I also think as the production, you're going to be very happy. Netflix has long had a small group of production companies that adhere to a very strict Netflix standard. You know what the standard is. They all look the same because you could use one of two cameras to complete the production and you had to have it within a certain grayscale color scale for use on Netflix. And what this did is it kept a very tight rein on decision making for Netflix executives. So once you got the okay to you're the production company, you're going to make this story and Netflix is distributing it they kept a tight rein and reduced decision making by saying you can use this camera or that camera, this lens or that lens. You can use this color scale or that. And that's why if you step back and take a broad look at the years of Netflix productions, their originals, they all look alike until three body problem where Game of Thrones creators, Benioff and Weiss were given rein to be able to create what they want to create and three body problem. I feel like it ended weird. It didn't end strong. It started for me, it started very strong, but I feel like it ended weak, but I really liked the way it looked, period. So I think that Dan, Dan Lin, at, I need to eat lunch, can you tell? That Dan Lin at Netflix is going to be a great thing for us. And that actually, I didn't have a Netflix subscription. Why? There's nothing to watch. <laughs> but I got it to watch Three Body Problem. I want to talk about the tentpole franchises to reduce churn. I'm a churner. Are you a churner? Comment below if you're a churner. What churn means is you're the person who gets a subscription to watch a show and then cancels. Hi. I'm a churner. I just did this. I actually got Netflix to be able to watch Three Body Problem and I share it with my mom and she's watching some series she hasn't seen before. So it's worth it. We're keeping it. I watched Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. I'm loving this distribution. They came out with Rebel Moon Part 1 and April 19th, they're coming out with Part 2. And again, you will notice, let your eyes see the difference in the colors and the production of it because it's beautiful. It, story-wise, we'll, we'll do a Rebel Moon review. I don't want to go at it on this. I just wanted to talk about Dan Lin coming into Netflix to lead it. The beauty is he's so successful in his own production company. He doesn't really need this job, yet he's got it. And I think he is the kind of person that is going to honor the viewer, the subscriber. And I think we're going to see some really good products coming out. And part of that strategy was to release one new film. I believe the goal is weekly and have that one, like that one really good movie of the week, be something beautiful, excellent, and of such quality that Netflix can be proud of it and subscribers will be glad to watch and to stay and to not churn. I got a membership to the Paramount Plus so that I could watch Halo and I'm out. And mm, Halo, we'll do another review on that. Long story short, Extraction, Code 8, and Rebel Moon are an example of that tentpole strategy and Dan Lin coming into Netflix. If you were going to create a story, what would you tell Dan Lin to do? I think all of us could wax poetic on, I am sick and tired of seeing the same film episode two, three, four, five. The fact that there's a John Wick five coming out, I feel like all y'all just needed a paycheck because I like the John Wick stories, but four was very weak, very weak. And here comes five. And Kung Fu Panda is performing well in the theater, but there's nothing else to watch. I really would have liked to see more marketing budget behind Arthur the King, the dog movie with Mark Wahlberg. It changed its, 
if you see the video with the distribution topic with Mark Bofies, you're going to hear him talk about your relationship with your release date is king. It is a blood covenant relationship. Don't change it. Once you set it, it's set. It's stone. It's blood. And Arthur the King changed their release date for their distribution and then did not get additional marketing support for it. And I don't know. It's not in my local theater anymore. It might be in big cities, though. Here was a great little film that had a chance to really break out at the box office and didn't receive the support. And you're like, well, how do you know they didn't receive the report, the support? You know how we know? You're not seeing any social media ads. I don't watch like network television in my radio, in my social media feeds across X, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I guess that's really TikTok. I'm not seeing any ads for Arthur the King. And great little film. I did not get to the theater fast enough to see it. Uh, I wish it would have stayed around a little bit longer. So long story short, this video is about Dan Lin. Congratulations, Mr. Lin. High five. Congratulations at this new position at Netflix. I'm very excited to see what can be done. I feel like Netflix has pioneered so much for the audience and for the creator. And I'm excited to see the new opportunities coming up and coming out. I just may keep that Netflix subscription a little bit longer. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I was just want to finish asking that question. If you could see a story made what do you want? It's like asking you what IP intellectual property, what IP do you want to see as a story on Netflix, as a film or as a series? Some stories lend better to a series. I am such a fan of the limited series where it's three episodes long. Don't squish it all into a movie. Don't drag it out to eight episodes. Some stories three to four episodes tells it perfectly. I'd love to know what do you want to see and then get word to Dan Lin and let's get creating. Hey, don't forget to meet me at NAB show for Creator Lab. I'm telling you, it's a hint of South by a pinch of VidCon and a splash of the American film market. You've got to come to Creator Lab, wander through the Cine Central. There's like a filmmaking community there at NAB show. And again, if you're like, well, I'm not a broadcaster. I don't do network broadcasting on the radio or on television. It's okay. 100 years of NAB show has seen it go from the very inception of the broadcast news all the way to AI and news making, producing, content creation, storytelling. NAB show is so much more. It's one of my most favorite shows. I go every year, except for the lockdown years, and I'd love to see you and meet you there because we need to talk about independence slate together for distribution. It's the secret and the key going forward in 2024. In order to get these stories made, it's all about embracing and maximizing the use of AI, not backing up from it. My opinion, the sooner you train yourself and get on board and become proficient in it, the more opportunities you'll actually have. It's, I don't think it's going to take away jobs. I think train yourself and be proficient and you're going to be more desirable to be hired on because you're AI proficient and expert in your production department. It's not taking jobs, it's creating jobs. Okay, this got long. Thank you for joining me. I hope this helps you. Big congratulations to Dan Lin. Read the full story in the link in the description and I will see you in the next one.